Well, folks, we just want to welcome you on a Good Friday to our service. I'm in my prayer room on the farm. Please forgive us if there's a little bit of an internet uh, interference. We can't help it. Uh, but we are so excited to be with you this morning. And before I bring the message, a very, very good friend, Henry Pike, uh, is going to sing that beautiful song about grace. So, Henry. It's over to you, son. Thank you. Uncle Angus, it's an honor for me to be a part of this morning. What a privilege to be a child of the Most High. Let's give God praise. And just wherever you are, just say, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Amen. So let's sing this song in honor of our King. This is Amazing Grace. Love is mighty, so much stronger. The King of Glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in our water? The King of Glory, the King above all kings. This amazing grace. Is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you will bear my cross, you lay down your life that I will be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done. Brings our chaos back into order. Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of Glory. You would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life, that I will be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Come on, he's worthy. you've done for me. 
worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's sing this. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the That was a most magnificent song. It is such an honor to be with you at this time. I don't think ever before in the history of the world, definitely not for 2,000 years, have Christians not been able to meet anywhere on this globe together. And so we are sitting together. I'm sitting in my prayer room on the farm, Shalom, in... Uh, uh, KwaZulu Natal, South Africa, and I have a, a message for you from the Lord for this very, very special day. I would like to say to you, my dear friend, that for me personally, Good Friday is the most important day in the Christian calendar. Because if there is no crucifixion, there can be no resurrection. And so we thank God for sparing his son, sending him down to earth and to live a life, a hard life, and then to die a most excruciating death for your sins and for my sins. I want to start off by speaking to you about Gethsemane. Now, Gethsemane is a very special place for me in Israel. There are trees in the Garden of Gethsemane that date back to the time of Jesus. You see, the olive tree never dies. It keeps retuning. It keeps springing out new branches. They say these trees are 2,000 years old. And I like to sit in the garden, and sometimes I become overcome with um, emotion when I think of the master spending the evening praying and saying to his Father in heaven, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, if it's possible, please take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but thy will be done. And you know, folks, I want to say to you, the cross is a symbol of death. And we need to deny ourselves in order to be effective believers. And I just think of the olive press because that's what the word Gethsemane means. It means olive press. It's where they crush the olives to get the oil out. And so Jesus spent that night in Gethsemane before he was crucified on Good Friday. And I think myself, it's just my own personal opinion, that maybe that night was more painful for the Lord than for the actual crucifixion. And maybe you sitting there, sir, madam, and maybe you saying, you know, Angus, I don't know what we're going to do when this lockdown is lifted. I don't know whether I'll have a job. I don't know whether I'll, I will have a school or a university to go to. I don't know whether I'll have a business. And it is the most excruciating time. I believe when Jesus told the disciples to wake up the the soldiers have come, the high priest soldiers have come to take him away. He had made his decision that he was going through with it. And after that, of course, the trial started. But he had to make that decision. Now, today, you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision whether you are going to believe the promises of God over your life or whether you are going to allow your mind to play games with you and take you into the deepest type of depression. I would say to you today, you need to say, as Jesus said, not my will, 
but thy will be done. If we look at the word of God in Mark chapter 14 and verse 32, and again Matthew chapter 26 and verse 34, the same thing is stated. Jesus said to his disciples, sit here. In other words, stay. Sit here. I'm going over there to pray. And they had to sit. And that's what you're doing at the moment. You are sitting because you are in lockdown. I am sitting because I am in lockdown. And this is the time for you and I on Good Friday. In my opinion, the greatest day in the calendar. Because Jesus made the decision to die for your sins and my sins. This is the time for us to meditate. I looked up the Oxford Dictionary to find out the meaning of the word meditate. It means to focus, to focus once and for all. And it means to focus one's mind for a period of time. And that takes some doing. Remember, a good idea is not always a good a God idea. And so to make a plan doesn't always work. In fact, it hardly ever works. It's never worked for me. We need to hear from God. And God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, will give you and I a game plan for when the lockdown is over. That's exactly right. But we need to sit and we need to listen to the Word of God. Now, you've got the whole day. That's right. You've got no visitors. You've got no meetings. You don't have to go to a church meeting. You don't have to do anything. You can go and sit in the garden if you've got one. You can go into a quiet room if you don't have a garden. You can go for a walk on the farm if you're by yourself. And you can meditate. You can focus on what the Lord is wanting to tell you. And I want to tell you, my dear friend, it will change your life. I have disciplined myself over the years. To come to this very room where I'm recording this program, my prayer room, my postinia, my quiet time place, to spend time with the Lord. And if you do that, the pain will go because you are suffering pain. Pain of not knowing what the future holds. Some of you are feeling totally abandoned. You will never be lonely. If you start to discipline yourself by spending time in meditation. Meditation does not come from the East. It's not from any other religion. It comes from God. Many times they could not find Jesus because he was meditating. He was spending time focusing on what his father was telling him to do. Now, I want to say to you, this is not the end. No, 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 no. This plague, this uh, virus, this coronavirus will pass and life will carry on. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Well, Good Friday, Jesus says, die to self and start living for him. And then you will have an abundant life. I am going to pray for you in just a few minutes time. Because some of you watching this program have never really made a full commitment to Christ, have you? Be honest. You like going to church. You like, maybe you even like watching our programs. But uh, that doesn't make you a Christian. And maybe what you need to do today is to make a total commitment. Say, Lord, when the lockdown is over, I don't know what to do. I've got no leader. I've got no leadership. I've got no money left. My staff have all been laid off. I maybe don't even have a job, but I do have you. And I want to tell you from experience, being a farmer, that if the Lord Jesus Christ is the managing director of your life, you have nothing to fear. Okay, because he has paid the price in full. You see, when he died on the cross, the last words he said before he died is, it is finished. What does that mean? It means it's finished. It means he's completed everything. It means you don't have to worry anymore. You can be like Paul who says, for me to live is Christ and to die is but gain. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him 
shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, my dear friend, we need to deny ourselves daily. We need to take up our cross and we need to follow after Jesus. And that will give us eternal life. It'll give us a reason to live. It'll give us a reason to get up in the morning. And when the devil says to you, what are you going to do after the lockdown is lifted? You say, devil, get behind me. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. He's the Lord and Savior of my life. And so I don't really care what's going to happen after the lockdown because I know that the Lord will never leave me and he will never forsake me. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Verse 6 says, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Absolutely nothing without God's permission. You know, my wife, Jill, and I, we have been uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. And we've been in uh, isolation for quite a few days now. And many people are writing and saying, are you okay? And I said, we are fine. We are well. We are strong in the Lord. But we keep lots of good company together. I see more of my wife now than I have probably for many, many years because I'm a traveler. I take the gospel all over the world. But I want to tell you, Jesus is our healer. He's our provider. He's our protector. And he is the one that will bring revival to this globe. I really believe, and you'll hear more on Easter Sunday, more about the revival that's going to come when this lockdown is lifted. Because I really believe this will be the last great revival, move of God, before the Lord Jesus returns. I feel it in my spirit. I can't prove it to you. God hasn't spoken to me audibly. I've never had that privilege. But I want to tell you, he's a friend to me that sticks closer than any brother. And I've been to Gethsemane not once, many times in my own life. Some of the darkest moments of my life. And you know, it's a funny thing. The darker it gets, the closer Jesus seems to be with me. And don't push him away. I think some of you watching this program now have a tendency when things get tough, you push the Lord away instead of encompassing him and bringing him into you. You see, our God is a God who understands pain. He understands failure. He understands all of these things that you and I go through. There are other religions where there's a God somewhere up in the stars and he's untouchable and he lives in a white uh, a castle and you can't get near him. Of course, there is no such God. There is only one God. But our God took on the form of a man, came down to earth and lived a very hard life for 30 years as a carpenter. And then for three years, he was abused. He was misrepresented. Uh, and then finally, he was stripped naked and he was crucified. He understands pain. He understands suffering and he understands you. Why, my friend? Because he made you. He created you. Now, I'm asking you now to pray a prayer with me as I close and to be sincere today. It is indeed, that's right, it is Good Friday, April and the year 2020. Write it down in the fly leaf of your Bible. Today, I got sincere with the Lord Jesus Christ. I asked him to be my Lord and Savior unconditionally. Not being like a fair weather Christian. When the sun's shining and everything's going good, then I'll go to church. And I'll pay my tithe. And I'll tell everybody I'm a Christian. But when the going gets tough, then I don't want to have anything to do with it. That is not a Christian. A Christian is like Job in the Bible who says, even though he slay me, yet will I still trust him. That is what God's looking for today. Unconditional surrender. You'll find that in the book of Job chapter 13 and verse 15. So my dear friend, I'm going to close now because I have to. I want you to take your Bible, go and sit underneath that tree, go into that quiet place and read all about the, uh, the passion. The passion of Christ. What a price he paid for you and me. Every time I go to Israel, and when I've been in the Garden of Gethsemane, I walk up the road, the Via Dolorosa, they call it, the road that leads to Calvary. And many times I get overwhelmed and overcome by emotion. When I see this is the area where the Lord had to take a, a, a right angle, and he fell, 
and he dropped the cross and probably landed on top of him. He was exhausted. He hadn't slept. They had beaten him, pulled his beard out. He didn't even, he looked, his back looked like a plowed field. And then they got a black man from Africa, Simon of Cyrene, and he picked up the cross and he carried it to Golgotha where they crucified him. <clears throat> Normally when I'm finished, I'm emotionally drained. Allow the Lord to speak to you today. Dear Lord Jesus, today, Good Friday, I acknowledge that you died a painful death on the cross of Calvary for my sins, for everything, for the bad thoughts, for the pornography, the alcoholism, the unfaithfulness, for all those things, Lord, which bring no joy to you or to me. I renounce them today. Lord, I thank you that by the blood that you shed, my sins have been forgiven. I thank you, Lord, by the stripes that you received from those Romans' whips. I have been healed, healed, healed of every disease, including the coronavirus. And today I ask you, Lord, to protect me, protect my family. I ask you, Lord, to give me vision and to make a way for me when the lockdown is lifted. And Lord, I promise that I will serve you and no one else because you alone died for me on the cross of Calvary. I ask these things in your precious name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you on Sunday morning. And I have something very, very exciting to share with you on Sunday morning that the Lord has revealed to me. I want to really make an announcement after the service on Sunday morning at nine o'clock. And please ask your friends to join you. And God bless you. And thank you for all your love towards me and Auntie Jill. We are strong. You can see that. We are not showing any symptoms. And we believe that that virus is leaving our bodies even as I speak to you now. God bless you. And have a very, very peaceful and a reflective meditation today. Goodbye. Thank you for joining Uncle Angus from his iPad this morning. During lockdown, we encourage you to get his Thought for Today voice notes every morning at 7 a.m. from the Angus Bucken app or the website angusbucken.co.za. See you again on Easter Sunday, right here at 9 a.m.